Okay, so that's nice and dry now. So yeah, what we can do is get some get some darker shades, some misty mountains. Do you fancy okay. some misty mountains? Yep. Um, the blue that we did for the sky, there's plenty of that left. That's the French ultramarine, so we can use that. Back into the water. What I want to do, very simply, is put a tiny bit of yellow ochre into this, but only a little tiny bit. Okay, mix it in with the blue, and you see it goes like a greeny grey shade. That's mm -hmm. spot on. Just a tiny bit. It's probably a bit too much. Just wipe some on the side of your okay. thing there. That's it. Mix it in with it. So it goes darker. Yeah. So it's like a greeny grey. Yeah. Ideal. Yeah. Okay. Just gonna put a bit of water with it. Yours is a bit heavy. Mine possibly as well. Do I need so, water in it? Yeah. Just put a blob. Yeah. A couple of blobs. Okay. And then nice loaded brush. And what I want to do, very simply, is just go along, keep loading up. Imagine the ups and downs of the rolling mountains there as you go up. Look. Take it up, take it down, straight through. It's around about, what, a quarter of your paper? Loaded brush. And then basically what I want to do is take this all the way down, keep picking up plenty of colour, and take it all the way down to the bottom of your picture. So just... Fill in that section that you've created. Bags of colour always. Nice loaded brush. Juicy colour. That's it. So when you pick your colour up, just make sure you dig it right down and get the last dregs of colour okay. as you do it, alright? Watercolour painting dries very quickly and to get yeah. a smooth coat or wash as it's known as right. it's better to get it on very quickly and that's it that can dry off and then we can get some other bits on there okay so again that's nice and dry it really is thoroughly dry this time what we've done while that was drying off is mixed up a touch more of the color which was the french ultramarine and a tiny blob of yellow ochre the greeny gray shade again what we'll do watercolor is transparent so it means you can add the same color over the top to get twice the colour, the strength in colour. Okay. So as long as this is dry, it means we can have another go. And of course there's no sketch on this, so we can just make <laughs> his own picture up. So again, nice loaded brush. And I'm looking at the shape of the mountains and I'm thinking maybe that could come down on this side. So straight here. I'm just gonna bring this up and go over the top of the first little peak I've got. You've got the same on okay. yours as well. And then look, just when I get to the valley, yep. just take it straight down, a bit wobbly. The mountains aren't perfect, are they? Straight down like this all the way and then fill it in. Exactly the same, just fill it in. Continue down. And notice how it's gone twice the shade, it's gone darker. So just straight down. You can make that noise if you want. That's it. <laughs> all the way across. To, yeah. that's, the, that's it, yeah. And then again, and fill it in. loaded brush, fill it in, block it in. What you may notice when you're doing this sort of thing at home is you get a little gather of colour. Now, this is where the sponge comes in again. Brush, tissue, wipe it through and just drag over the top. Just take away that little bit where it's gathering slightly. Okay? okay. Can you see the kind of distant feeling you've got between yeah. the two mountains? Yeah, so can, yeah. The darker one comes closer. Yeah, definitely. But the point is it's the same colour. Same colour over the top again. Transparent sheets of glass, build it up and up. Put that brush away, that's the number 10. Okay. And then we'll use a smaller brush. This is a, around about a size six, the same style round pointy brush. But what I'm gonna do now is just slightly add a little tiny bit of the red into the color. This'll make it more gray. The color is alizarin crimson, and I'm putting a tiny spot of this color into the the greeny grey mixture. What it will do is make it more like a definite dark grey. Can you see that? Yeah. How it's darkened it so slightly. No more water, just. <clears throat> no just more water paint. because there's plenty in there. Okay. Okay. And then what we'll do, look, be creative. Let's just paint something on this side, okay. on the left side, a house or a tree or something. What do you fancy, a house or a tree? Let's go for a house. Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> so what we're going to do on this side then is just paint the basic silhouette of a house. So if I put a line down there. Paint like a bit of an apex of a house, okay. so a triangular shape with the, the sides, and like a barn or something on like that. On the top of the mountain? Yeah. Imagine it's sat on the edge yeah. of the hillside as you do it. Okay. That's it. Okay, and then what we can do then is we can put the roof line on. 
So just a basic silhouette because it's a misty kind of yeah. feeling to the picture. Now when you get to this side, the opposite apex, you can just match it through. Just match the first angle that you put on. So it's a line. So it's across. Yeah, across and down. And then you, that's the roof line basically. Yeah. Follow the first angle that you painted on. That's uh -huh. it. And then put the other wall on, straight down. Lock it in. Lock it in like this. And that'll sort of sit on the top. That's it. So straight away you can see the house sat there, can't you? Yeah. So again, that's got to dry off and then just put a simple shadow to finish off. Okay, so again, that's nice and dry. So let's yeah. get some detail, a shadow side, maybe the roof line and a door so you can get in there as well. Yeah. Now what I'd like to do, this colour, this grey colour, mixed yeah. with the three colours, yeah. is thicken up. So the water's in there. Yeah. If not, you can put some more in, but just get a nice thick blob of blue. This is the number six brush again. Get the blue and put it back into it. Put the blue back into the colour again. Okay. Quite a lot then. Yeah, try and get it so it's a healthier colour. Yeah. A bit more juicy. <laughs> and then put a little bit of uh, the yellow ochre. Tiny bit of yellow ochre again. And you'll see, hopefully, it's gone darker. Yeah. Okay. Like greeny. Yeah, you could put a little bit of the red as well, but only a tiny spot. That's the crimson, yeah. alizarin crimson. Just a tiny bit of the red as well. And it just, the red kills the green, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. And it gives a nice natural, that's it, get it all mixed in. So you put a little bit too much red in there, put some more blue with it, and that'll combat that. Okay. So, yeah, just Should stick it in. Yeah, no, it? stick it in. Go on, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The colours will all work together anyway. Yeah. That's quite dark. Okay, put a little bit of yellow ochre in there, look, just on a tiny bit of the brush. Just work that in. That's it. That'll be fine. Is that too dark, man? No, it's a nice dark, juicy colour. What I want to do is paint the apex again. Okay. Paint the apex again, like this. So it's giving the dark side to the, to the house. And then just put a little thin line underneath the eaves there. You can kind of see the loose shape of a house there. It's only loose, yeah. but it's there, it's fine. So we just fill that side in. And then put a thin line right underneath the roof line. Imagine where the roof sits, yeah. the gutter in, okay? Now to make this sit down in the picture, if you have a quick look at this, I'm just gonna continue that color into the mountain and then in front of the house and follow the edge of the mountain again. Okay. Now what you'll find as you do this, take it under the, the building as well, take it in front of the, the house, follow the, the mountain edge. When your brush starts to run out of colour, start to do this. Sweep forward and back, and you get a bit of texture to the hillside. Okay. Try and sort of work a little bit freer with your hand, a bit looser. Yeah, okay. Imagine you're painting <laughs> the wall, yeah? Oh, I'm just <laughs> Flick it from side to side that, and then bring it down. Look, see how I brought it down a bit there? Yeah. Flick. That's it. So it's getting like a bitty effect. You can hear the noise yeah. as well. Yeah. It's like a dry brush. So it's not too severe. That's right. It kind of gives it a base. Do you think it sits it down? Yeah. And then if you want to, stick a little window on because you need something to look through and a bit of a doorway, okay. something. I think my mask house is in need of repair. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky. Yours is very neat, I must <laughs> say. So just a little square. Yeah, just a blob, a square. And then if you've got time, put a few little birds in as well in the sky. Little flick. That's it. And there you go, your first watercolour painting. Well done. Amazing. That's brilliant. Okay, so fantastic. Just one final thing to do. Just get a cardboard bevel mount and just pop it on the picture and it really cleans up the scene. You can alter the, you know, the yeah, composition a bit, but it makes yeah. it, you know, it's surprising, yeah, it isn't it? What a job it's done of that. Yeah. And don't it look like a sky now? Okay, so what do you think then, Mandy? Fantastic, really easy. Yeah? I would never imagined I could do that, but Excellent. that's so easy. So you Thank fancy you. having another go then? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> okay, so join us next time.
I can't believe how easy it was. The, for my first painting, it's unbelievable. So easy, anybody could do this. I'm really impressed with myself. <laughs>